My name is Chris Suchdev. I'm an information technology major specializing in web development at Florida State University. I'm a dependable, hardworking person that will do whatever needs to be done. I'll work around the client's needs to get them what they want. Give me a call whenever is best for you, and we'll set up a meeting. Today we'll be installing WAMP Server 2 on a Windows machine with Windows 7 Professional. We'll start off by going to WAMPServer.com, going to the English tab over on the right, and then to the Download tab. couple of warnings, you want to delete any previous versions of WAMP server that you have installed and actually delete the WAMP directory from your C drive. The install file will be an executable file. When you enter the wizard, you'll come to the license agreement to accept. It will ask you where you want to install it. You want to make sure you know where that's going to be. Ask if you want to make any additional icons. It'll ask what you want your default web browser to be. You can use the one it recognizes or pick another one that you like. Then ask for your PHP mail parameters. You can either change them if you know what you're doing or leave them at the default values if you don't. Okay, we're done with the wizard now and we'll go ahead and launch WAMP Server 2. The task tray icon will appear in the bottom right. You'll notice it changing colors. All the way white means all your services are completely online. Everything's ready to go. Little lock indicates that your server's offline. It's running locally on your machine, but you'll have to turn it on before people can access your server. If you right click the icon, it'll bring up a little menu where you can change the language and view help about the product. When you left click, it brings up the main menu where you can put it online, start and stop all services, view the options and versions you're running for each of the Apache, PHP, and MySQL. You also have access to the www directory, which all your files are stored, and also view the localhost and PHP My Admin page. Go ahead and left click the icon again and open up the localhost, which brings up that server configuration page where you can view the versions you're running, the extensions, uh, different tools, and stuff like that. I'm going to go ahead and open up Notepad and paste in a very basic page that I already wrote up just something that'll be valid, something that'll display text so we can see that that page is actually there. We'll go ahead and save it. We'll locate that www directory with the index.php file and we'll name it index.html. Go back to the browser. Notice that when you refresh your page, that server configuration page still shows up because it's defaulted to go to the PHP version of index. You can go to the top and manually type in uh, forward slash index.html, which will recognize that page and load it. We'll go to the www directory and locate that index.php file and just rename it to index1.php. Now we'll go back to our browser and we'll refresh the local host, which will recognize that index.html page as the main page that you go to. Now you want to find out what your IP address is so you can direct others to your web server so they'll be able to view what's on it. Now we're going to use a site called whatismyip.com and that's going to show us the external IP address of the computer that we have the web server set up on. Now you want to point your domain name the IP address of your web server, which you just found out. Now you can forward your domain with masking, or you can go into the DNS control panel and change it there. Now you're ready to put WAMP Server 2 online so that your web server will be visible to anybody that tries to access it. You'll notice that the lock has disappeared and everything is fully online and ready to be viewed by anyone else.